Welcome to the Luxembourg PVC Stories. Today we are hosting Eckhard Vogler. He is the head of Invest Industrial Luxembourg office. He's also an LPA XCOM member and also our favorite treasurer. Hi Eckhard. Hi Stefan. Pleasure to have you. So let's go and uh, drill into that uh, interview here. What can you tell us about Invest Industrial? How, when and who started the entire adventure? Invest Industry was founded in 1990 out of an industrial group. At the moment, we have roughly 11 billion of committed capital. Invest Industrial is focusing on investing into mid-sized firms, which are leaders in their field. And our regional focus is with investments in mainly Italy and Spain. And we've chosen Luxembourg as our main fund hub. Great, excellent choice. What is the main activity and core philosophy of Invest Industrial? Well, Invest Industrial invests with a long-term horizon. So we've got a entrepreneurial and industrially driven approach. And uh, well, our strategy is to, as we say, building better companies in the long term. And this we try to achieve through regional or product diversification, as well as consolidation. On top of that, we are improving operational efficiencies, but with a focus really on ESG matters. That's exactly the value creation parts, which we are very proud of in our sectors. Um, you mentioned then optimizing those firms. Which sectors are you particularly following and also investing in? And secondly, any recent deals you would like to mention here? Yes, in terms, in terms of sectors, we cover healthcare and leisure, consumer and services, industry manufacturing, and technology. Some recent deals. So, um, we've recently closed the exit from our investment into Pauline Reichold. Pauline Reichold is a global leader in composites and uh, pe well, chemical polymers. I can hardly pronounce it. Um, we have been invested into this company with two consecutive funds for approximately 10 years. When we started the investment, Pauline was an Italian champion, but throughout the holding period, we developed it into a global player. A second exit, very recent, was from our Italian lab chain called LifeBrain. Um, LifeBrain has well, consolidated significantly over our holding period in the Italian market. Um, on top of that, they have diversified from being a pure lab chain, medical lab chain, into fields of uh, environmental testing and food testing. Well, speaking about food, another well, deal we closed this year was the acquisition of CSM Ingredients. CSM Ingredients is a global leader in, uh, well, producing bakery ingredients, bakery and pastry ingredients. And as I know, Stefan, you and your team, you love pastry. Uh, and champagne. You will probably, well, consume their products without even knowing it. Um, because, well, what, what they do are basically ingredients for pastry, bread, and all kinds of fillings, toppings, and uh, raw materials which they well, produce in the eight uh, plants which they have around the world, most of them in Europe, but also one in China and one in Africa. Well, worth noting for this investment is that the group board has decided to create and incorporate the operating group holding company here in Luxembourg. And as of now, this company already has more than 12 employees, among them all the group board members. On top of that, we have managed to attract an ESG expert as an independent director for the board. Oh, that ESG element is very interesting. And thanks also for sharing so many details, those different deals, because that's part of the transparency, but also then we concretely understand what is really happening and how you transform those firms. Fantastic. Um, the Invest Industrial setup, how does it look like? 
Um, can you tell us more about the, the different offices you're having and also uh, globally how many persons do work for Invest Industrial? Yes, sure. So globally, we have roughly 150 employees at the moment um, spread across the offices in Luxembourg, Switzerland, UK, Spain, USA and China. Um, we have got dedicated, let's say, industrial and sector experts. And on top of that, we have a sustainability team which covers all kind of ESG matters, but not for the group on the one hand, but also for all the portfolio companies on the other hand. And since you're also heading the Luxembourg office, so uh, what's a little bit the operating model you are having here and uh, the composition of your local team? What kind of experts are those? Well, in Luxembourg, the group started already many decades ago, and at one point they were listed even at the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. Um, the Luxembourg office for the PE business has been historically focusing on corporate governance, administration and management of the investment process into the investee companies. Then following the AFMD implementation in 2014, we implemented and regulated AFM. Um, <clears throat> since then, well, this AFM offers combined, let's say, fund administration, fund management, uh, governance, operations, services for all the funds of the group. We've got 17 employees at the moment, which are focusing, well, risk and compliance, fund and company administration, uh, corporate governance, uh, accounting and uh, operations. And we're planning, let's say, to expand the office even further. Looks like really a very robust office and uh, really fully fledged with all the experts you need. Uh, considering that, do you think that it would make sense to have also more front office investor relations and fundraising activities out of Luxembourg and in Luxembourg? Well, I would say especially for investor relations, given the recent, let's say, changes and updates in the marketing and distribution regulation, it definitely makes sense to strengthen that aspect within a Luxembourg AFM. And uh, last year was a little bit complicated. COVID appeared. What happened at Invest Industrial? At Invest Industrial, I think we were ahead of the curve because when the pandemic well, entered Europe, the first country or one of the countries that was most affected at the very beginning was Italy and also Switzerland. And through our presence well, in Switzerland and all the, many of the portfolio companies being in Italy, uh, we already started to implement health and safety measures very early. On top of that, all the employees already had a dedicated home office equipment and technology. And that was, that was all tested. And then when we went into home office there in the first uh, lockdown in March 2019, um, well, whatever was missing, uh, we, we swiftly purchased and distributed to, to, to all the employees in their home offices. So like uh, scanners, printers or additional monitors. We also made extensive use of the local query services who went to all the offices, all the homes, no, not the offices, the homes of the employees and, uh, well, distributed all the additional equipment that we bought. But they also brought documents that required signatures in original. And they basically sometimes went from, from home to home, from house to house, and then to get all the documents ready. What was really surprising to us that so many institutions insisted on getting, well, original documents throughout the, the, the pandemic. Um, but, well, thanks to all the local career services, we managed to meet all the requirements and without any delay. Sorry. Well, then in the second phase from July 2020, uh, we came back to the office on a voluntary basis in a two-group model. With a successful vaccination campaign, we started easing the, the rules. 
And since then, we are monitoring the developments in Luxembourg, but also in the neighboring countries. Uh, given that, we have then, well, recently reintroduced the two-group model, and we are also working under the COVID check regime. A great uh, resilient model and uh, has proven right uh, despite then the pandemic. Well done on that part. You mentioned before that you hired also an, an ESG expert. You mentioned also sustainable, the, that angle. So uh, what is a bit your ESG policy and strategy? How active are you? Indeed. So implementing environmental, social, and governance issues into our business model is really vital. And we think it's a core pillar of creating value for all our portfolio companies. In this sense, we've been active in this, in this model and developing long-term strategies uh, with the portfolio companies with the aim to, as we say in our slogan, building better companies. In concrete terms, we have been working on this topic well, for already two decades, and we've implemented and created a separate sustainability team and developed our own sustainability approach. Within this, the sustainability team is working with all the other teams in the whole deal cycle. So they do their ESG due diligence before the investment is made. They are spreading out, going into the portfolio companies, implementing our models and our reporting, and obviously looking for uh, all matters that can improve in the area of, of ESG. On top of that, um, well, at Exit, obviously, we try to, we try to use and, and, and leverage on the improvements that we've made in this field. The reporting, that is a quarterly and annual reporting, which includes all group companies and all portfolio companies, has developed in the past years, well, in collecting more than 10,000 data points every year. On a second work stream, climate, let's say, uh, climate-related topics are also extremely important for the group. So the group itself has been climate neutral, carbon neutral since 2009. The group investments have been put on carbon neutral since 2015. And in 2020, we decided to put the whole funds with all investee companies on carbon neutral and we will continue to do so. Last not least, we have reached top score of A plus in the UN PRI uh, assessment model, and we are a B Corp member with the highest rating for all private equity buyout firms. Those are fabulous results and really a, a pioneer in the sector, so we'll certainly meet again in the future, Eka, to discuss those points. Um, your view on the Luxembourg ecosystem and in infra infrastructure right now, how do you see it? Anything we could or should upgrade? Well, I'd say in the past 10 years, the private equity sector in Luxembourg has developed significantly. Um, to name some milestones, we had the implementation of the modern limited partnership law and we had the AFMD implementation. Um, In terms of, well, further improvements, I would say Luxembourg should strengthen its sustainable finance approach, strengthen and deepen it. And I personally think there should be zero tolerance in the fund sector for any kind of greenwashing. True. That's really not uh, helping the sector at all. And uh, if you do it, you should do it truly. But I think that sustainable finance uh, is a very important ingredient for the success of our industries in the future. On a more personal basis, because we also like to address those different points, Eckhard Vogler, I will not ask you who you are, but we will be very interested to hear about your studies. Where did you 
start your career? Well, I started working at Deutsche Bank as an apprentice directly after school. So that took two years, uh, where I basically learned banking from scratch, which was, let's say, the, the, all the basics and then also retail banking. Um, following that, I studied economics in Germany, but with a focus also on, on, on languages, so I learned and, and deepened uh, my knowledge in, in English and Russian. After university, I started working at Westlb, um, at the head office in, in, in Dusseldorf. I had several functions there within investment banking, controlling risk management, and at the end as head of the middle office for the investment banking activities in Dusseldorf. After nine years, I was asked whether I would like to go to Russia, which I did with pleasure. Um, I knew the language, I knew the culture, and I was, I was obviously uh, thrilled by that, by that opportunity. And so I became head uh, or CEO, CFO of the subsidiary of SLB in Russia for four years. Following that, I came to Luxembourg, still for SLB for, for two years. Here in Luxembourg, um, my task was restructuring the bank, which was a fully fledged, let's say, uh, bank, and reduce it into a private bank, which then needed to be prepared for a sale. And by this, I obviously learned uh, the <laughs> gist and the content of uh, due diligence, preparing a company for, for a sale, presenting it to, to investors. And well, in this restructuring process, also uh, I made myself, <laughs> I restructured myself, and so I had to look for a new opportunity here in Luxembourg and uh, found it in the, in the PE sector and joined Invest Industrial, yeah, 10 years ago. Well done. This is a <clears throat> also a very interesting adventure you are just explaining here. Some parts we did actually not know, so that's uh, great. Um, what kind of tip or hint would you give to talents interested or um, envisaging to join us in the private equity and venture capital sectors? Well, I think in general, what is, what is important for, for young talents is, um, well, not only to learn things, but to learn how to learn. Because now we speak about this lifelong learning cycle so we need, to, we need to learn and relearn and make new experience all throughout our career. This is one thing. Another thing which I think is very important is not only focusing on accumulating knowledge and just learning facts, because the facts change tomorrow, it's all outdated. So what is important from my point of view is making a deep dive into the models, into theories, into abstract, let's say, models, and really understanding them, getting a deep and broad understanding. That, I think, will help in coping with known but also unknown situations, because as we've seen, financial crisis, euro crisis, unpredicted and still a lot of the mechanics which you know from the, from the models can work. And I think this is, this is really important. It's great to share that uh, analytical skills are very important and also to be pragmatic in order to constantly evolve further. Great job. Um, any specific lead or person who inspired you, motivated you? Yes, indeed. At a very, at a very early moment, uh, when I started working at Deutsche Bank, as, as I mentioned before, at the time, Alfred Herrhausen was the CEO of Deutsche Bank. And he was criticized a lot um, because at the time there was a huge discussion in Germany about the power of banks. And Deutsche Bank being the biggest bank in Germany at the time and one of the biggest in the world, um, was criticized a lot for, for its power it had, not only as a bank, but overall in the economy with its participations at the time. And, also as, as, uh, as Alfred Herrhausen himself, as advisor to, to, to governments, for example. Um, he tried to, to, to compensate that with developing concepts of responsible entrepreneurship, responsible investing. 
on top of that, he also brought forward ideas of debt relief for over-indebted, especially, well, as they were called at the time, third world countries. And he was criticized a lot for that concept. Being so much in the focus of, of power and uh, banks, he unfortunately also got in the focus of the German terrorist group RF, and he died in a bomb attack of the RF uh, in 1989. Nevertheless, I think the ideas he promoted are an early, let's say, development of, of what we now cover under the ESG framework. Kind of a dramatic story, but uh, very strong also with what was kept and why it helped further. Thank you for sharing that also, Eka. Um, and now on an, let's say, lighter finish, um, any books or series, podcasts, music you would like to share with our audience? Well, I must say I very much like the book called Freakonomics. Oh yeah, great. Um, when that was published, it was, uh, I think, one of the first publications which analyzed what we now call big data. Um, with, well, it's analysis with statistical models of uh, or trying to explain sociological phenom phenomena, and uh, they come to very, very striking and uh, eye-catching, let's say, observations. At the same time, the book shows and the publication shows the risks of big data, because already very shortly after the first publication, I think one of the stories had to be withdrawn because they noted I don't, don't remember exactly the detail, but either the, the quality of the data was not sufficient or the, 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 the um, conclusions were, were seen as not, not correct. So there are huge opportunities in big data, and, and, but there's also risks in, in, in incorrect, uh, let's say, analysis. On the other hand, um, well, I'm a great amateur of, of, of music as well. Um, and I, I very much love the very complex music which uh, you find in, 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 well, for example, the operas of, of Richard Wagner or the, the, the symphonies of Gustav Mahler. Um, I'm also a great amateur of, of the Russian culture, as, as mentioned, and, and, and I love the, the opera and, and symphonic works of, of Tchaikovsky. So I think it's, it's incredible. Um, that one single human brain can, can invent such complex uh, music and, 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 and pieces of art. It's, uh, it's simply fantastic. Thanks for sharing all those details. And I think uh, after Diana, who also joined us recently, uh, she also proposed to go and uh, have some fun with different operas. That is something we could do certainly in the future. Eckhart, on a more serious note, really, thanks a lot for joining us, for participating in this interview. And we are so happy to continue those great projects together. Okay, yeah, thanks for the invitation. Thanks.